Every waveform tells a story, and once you learn the morphology of each waveform, you will have a huge advantage when you're scanning people to determine if something's normal versus abnormal. And if it's abnormal, you'll be able to tell if there's disease downstream or upstream. This first waveform we're going to talk about is a triphasic pulsatile waveform. This shows a high velocity and high resistance flow. We know this is high velocity because we can compare it to the velocity scale. And we know it's high resistance because there's very little to no flow during diastole. These types of waveforms can also be referred to as laminar flow. You can expect to see this type of waveform in any artery that's not feeding an organ. This includes the aorta, all the arteries in the leg, all the arteries in the arm, and the very prox portion of the carotid artery. But as you move up the carotid or distally, you'll start to see more diastolic flow. Every normal triphasic waveform will have a rapid, sharp upstroke. This is caused by each cardiac contraction, and this will tell you where the blood flow came from. This represents early systole. Then we have this rapid downslope, or this rapid deceleration slope. This tells you where the blood flow is going, and this indicates the closure of the aortic valve. You would see a dichratic notch in about this area here. A dichratic notch indicates the closure of the aortic valve. This rapid deceleration slope will go below the baseline and represents temporary reversal of flow during late systole to early diastole. You could also say this is a temporary retrograde flow. Then the waveform will come up past the baseline and will touch the baseline one more time, thus ending the triphasic flow. Triphasic waveforms will have a point here, here, and here. Since this is a high velocity, high resistance flow, there won't be any flow in diastole. That's normal for any artery that's not feeding an organ. What maintains flow going in one direction is the pressure differences on all sides of an artery. Anytime resistance goes up, that means the length of the tube has increased and also the viscosity has increased. And viscosity is how thick the blood is or how well the blood is sticking together. If the radius of a vessel decreases, then resistance will also increase. And the radius has the biggest effect on resistance because it's calculated to the fourth power. Inside every normal spectral Doppler will have this anechoic area. This should be an echo-free space. This is called the spectral window. If this is ever filled in, there's a number of things that could be going on. This could either be due to a sonographer's error or there could be some sort of disease going on. This is a good example of when the spectral window is filled in. This is called spectral broadening. If you see spectral broadening that's not due to a sonographer's error, this is likely to be disease or a tortuous vessel. If you see spectral broadening in your waveforms and there is disease, that means all the flow here is turbulence. If you see spectral broadening in a normal vessel, there's a few things that you need to check. First is your gain. Turn down your gains. That should eliminate all the filled in echoes in the spectral window. Then check your angle and align your cursor in the middle of the vessel so that the cursor is parallel to the vessel. Then check your sample gate volume or your gate. These mean the same thing. The sample gate or the sample volume is a little space here that picks up the velocities through a vessel. The diameter of that cursor should be small. If you're ever asked how to fix spectral broadening, you're gonna look for all the options that include turn down your spectral gains or just turn on your gains, align your cursor parallel and in the middle of the vessel, and make sure your sample gate volume and gate are small. This waveform can be characterized as a abnormally high velocity with an abnormally low resistance. We know it's low resistance because there's blood flow in diastole, but this is abnormally low. We have a peak end diastolic velocity equaling 100 centimeters per second, and a peak systolic velocity almost reaching 300 centimeters per second. This indicates a significant stenosis in this area. This tells the sonographer that the disease is in the exact area they're evaluating. Here's another example of spectral broadening. You can see that the spectral window is filled in here. And this shows that the spectral window is filled in by this abnormal turbulent flow. This type of waveform you can expect to see distal to a stenosis. This is called the post-stenotic turbulent flow. This will show somewhat of a slow upstroke and a delayed systolic deceleration slope here with flow in diastole. 
In this example, you can see that when blood flow is approaching a stenosis, in order to maintain flow throughout this vessel, the pressure has to drop while the velocity will increase. In the middle of a stenosis, you're going to have the highest kinetic energy and the lowest potential energy. Then as blood flow comes out of the stenosis, you're going to see a lot of turbulent flow. That's because the pressure increased as the vessel diameter increased. Here we have an example of a biphasic arterial waveform. This is where you'll have anti-grade flow in systole and then reversal flow in late to early diastole. But you won't see blood flow here in diastole. You'll only see flow above the baseline and then below the baseline, and that's it. You'll have a point here and a point here. Biophasic waveforms indicate either it's normal or the patient has good collateral blood flow. This waveform here is characterized as a low velocity, high resistance flow. You're gonna have this slow upstroke with a slow downslope. We know it's low velocity because we can compare it to the scale here. And we know it's high resistance flow because there's no flow in diastole. This is also referred to as monophasic flow, and this is problematic. If you see this waveform in an artery, that means the disease or occlusion is downstream from where you're scanning. And just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, if you saw that waveform right here, that means that the disease is going to be down here somewhere. If you see that waveform, that means you are upstream from the disease and the disease is downstream. The easiest way to wrap your head around upstream and downstream, if you jump in a river, you're going to flow naturally downstream without having to do much work. But if you want to go upstream, you're going to have to turn around and swim up against the current. This is upstream. If you see that low velocity, high resistance monophasic flow, that means the disease is going to be down here or downstream or distal, and you're evaluating upstream or proximal to the disease. Again, this is a low velocity, high resistance monophasic arterial flow. This waveform is characterized as having a low velocity, low resistance flow. Blood flow will have a more delayed upstroke, followed by a delayed downslope. This is called the Tardis Parvus waveform. This waveform here indicates that you are evaluating an area distal or downstream from the disease, and the disease is upstream or proximal. That means if you saw that waveform right here, the disease will be proximal or upstream, and you're evaluating the disease downstream or distally. The difference between this waveform and this waveform is that we have flow in diastole. And if you see a low velocity, low resistance flow with flow in diastole, you have to think that you are evaluating the disease downstream. If you see this waveform with a low velocity, high resistance flow with no flow in diastole, that means you're evaluating the disease upstream. When you see these waveforms, that means you're evaluating the disease downstream. When you see these waveforms, that means you're evaluating the disease upstream. This waveform is considered monophasic with a high velocity, high resistance flow with very little to no flow during diastole. We know this is monophasic because there's no flow reversal below the baseline here. Because it's monophasic with little flow in diastole, this indicates that you are evaluating the disease downstream or distal and the disease is upstream or proximal. That means if you're evaluating right here, the disease is up here, which is upstream or proximal, and you're evaluating downstream or distal to the disease. This is another example of a low velocity, high resistance flow. There's no flow in diastole. That means you're evaluating upstream or proximal to the disease, and the disease is downstream or distal. Keep in mind that any normal artery that feeds an organ will have somewhat of a lower resistance flow throughout diastole while maintaining this echo-free space of the spectral window. This is normal for any artery feeding an organ. This is an example of a renal artery waveform. If you ever see loss of diastolic flow in the renal artery, that's suggestive of something abnormal going on with the kidney. You should maintain this low resistance flow during diastole. This can be characterized as a low velocity, low resistance flow. Normal blood flow further away from the heart will have this respiratory phasic blood flow, where blood flow is more affected by respirations. If this was recorded in the legs, then this would be during inspiration and expiration, because as the patient breathes in, blood flow will decrease 
while during expiration, blood flow will increase. If this was recorded in the arms, blood flow will increase in the arms, neck, and head during inspiration and will decrease during expiration. This waveform is called a continuous monophasic waveform, which indicates that an obstruction is downstream while you're evaluating upstream. In this diagram, if you're evaluating right here in the femoral vein, that means the disease would be downstream or proximal. Now going back to that river analogy, if you jumped into a river, you're going to flow downstream without any trouble. But if you want to flow upstream, you're going to have to turn around and swim. This is a little different from the arterial system because in the arterial system, downstream is going this way. And this would be upstream. But on the venous side, this is downstream because we're going towards the heart. And this would be upstream. But all the prox and distal segments are the same when you're comparing the venous and the arterial side. It's only the downstream and the upstream that change. Here's another example of a continuous monophasic blood flow. If you saw this waveform, that means the disease is downstream and you are evaluating in an area upstream. 